Welcome to section three, part A. This is curved mirrors, and we're just gonna go over the concepts in this one. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna distinguish or tell the difference between real and virtual images. We're gonna calculate the distances and focal lengths using the mirror equation for concave and convex spherical mirrors. And for today, this part, we're just gonna do the concepts. We'll do the math in the next video. And then we're going to describe how parabolic mirrors differ from spherical mirrors. So when we're talking about real and virtual images, I introduced a virtual image in the last one when we talked about uh, flat mirrors. And I talked about how if you have something here, and I think the example is a candle, and then you have somebody's eye looking at something, right? The images reflect off, but they, we see it back over here, okay? And so because these light rays don't actually meet in reality, that makes it a virtual image, okay? So a real image then is they exist when the light rays actually meet at the point where an image is. And the virtual image is when the image is at a point where the light rays do not meet. So let's look at another example of this. So here, okay, here's a curved mirror that we're gonna talk about today. And what happens in a curved mirror is the light rays, if this is the object, they all reflect off the mirror and come back to this point. And we can actually see an image here. And the light rays actually meet there. So that makes it a real image. You could actually hold up a piece of paper there and you would see the image at that point. Whereas like in the uh, example I just gave with a virtual image, we see the object here even though the light rays don't go to that point. So it's a virtual image. So now we're gonna talk more uh, closely about curved mirrors. So there's essentially three types of curved mirrors. Okay, we're gonna talk about spherical mirrors, which have two types, concave and convex. And then we're gonna talk about para par parabolic mirrors. So when we look at a spherical mirror, okay, spherical mirrors are, where mirror, are mirrors where the glass curves along the surface of a sphere. So when you see this curve, you could imagine if you kept going around, it would be a circle, okay? And the two types are convex and concave, okay? And on a concave mirror, the inside here is the reflective surface, okay? So inside reflects, and that's why they have these lines here on the outside that you see. That tells you that's the non-reflecting side. And on a convex mirror, then it's the opposite. So it's the outside of it that is shiny and reflective, Okay, so this side is shiny and reflective, and then you can see all these little things there mean that that's not the reflective side. So we're gonna take a closer look at both of these kinds of mirrors now. So when we're trying to understand how spherical mirrors work, if you shine lights into a spherical mirror from a long distance away, okay, they will hit the mirror and reflect to a single point. And this point is gonna be important, and we're gonna call that the focal point of a mirror. And when it's a focal point, we use the capital letter F. So the distance between that point and the mirror is the focal length of the mirror. And for that, we use the lowercase f, but they're essentially the same point. And it can be used to calculate where an image will be formed by the mirror. And it turns out that that focal point is equal to the radius divided by 2. So let's take a look at um, understanding this visually. So here you can see, here's a picture of a curved mirror, and all the light has come in, right, and then it reflects back to a single point, no matter where that light comes in. Now, in reality, it only works if it's really close to this axis, okay? But theoretically, it will all come into that point, and this is our focal point where all those light rays will meet, and the distance between the mirror and that point is the focal length. So focal point, again, is capital F, and focal length is lowercase f. So remember, this is a spherical mirror, so this mirror, you could imagine, kept going out in a circle, and that focal point ends up always being half the radius. So if the radius of it was out here, right, so that this distance was your radius, then this point here would be at f equals r over two. So let's look at more pictures to help us understand. Okay, so here's a picture of we've got a concave and a convex mirror. 
And let's just see if we can identify which one's which. So if we look here, it tells us the light is coming from this side, so it's going to reflect here on the outside of this curve. So because it's reflecting on the outside, this one is going to be convex. And this other one over here, it's reflecting on the inside of the mirror. So this one is going to be concave. If it helps, remember I think of a, it's a cave, concave. You go inside a cave, so it's reflective inside. That's my little trick to remember. So now as we're looking at it, let's just identify. When we have a concave mirror, okay, it curves around this way, so your radius, when it says center of curvature, that's essentially the radius, is going to be on this side of it. And so then the focus point is halfway in between, and we call the distance here between the mirror and the focus point the focal length. Okay? This principal axis just means it's at the center, halfway between the top and the bottom of the curve. On a convex mirror, on the other hand, even though the light's reflecting over here, the radius still ends up on the back side. And so the focal length and the focal point are on the back side of the mirror too, even though everything's reflecting over here. So here's kind of an example of the images we can get. Okay, a spoon, if it's shiny enough, can provide a really good reflective surface. Okay, and so here we have a convex. It's shining off the back of the spoon. And here we get a concave. And you notice that the image is upside down. And that's going to be really important here in a second as we start talking about the types of images we get from concave and convex mirrors. So anytime we have a convex mirror, we always get a virtual image and the image is not flipped. So there's two words that we're going to use here sometimes. The word flipped, and then we also might use the word inverted. And when we use these two words, they both mean that something is upside down. Okay, so if we had a smiley face, our smiley face would be upside down. Okay. That's what flipped or inverted means. Um, the other one, now if we look at concave, okay, concave depends on whether you're inside or outside of the focal point. So remember, if we've got a concave mirror, here's our concave mirror, here's our axis, right? Maybe the focal point is here, okay? So if you have an object here inside, okay, we're going to get a different set of things than if we have an object outside the focal point, okay? So when the object is outside the focal point, we get a real image, so the light rays meet, and the image is flipped, it's upside down. But if the object is inside the focal point, then the image is going to be virtual, and the image will not be flipped. So it will be, another word for this one is upright. Okay, and so our smiley face here would be the right direction. So we've got upright and inverted, or flipped and not flipped. If it's a convex, though, that's the simple one, because always virtual image is always not flipped, and that will always be true. So here, let's see if we can figure out, based on what I wrote on the table before, what the different kinds of images we're seeing here. So I'm just going to give you a second to see if you can identify whether it's a concave or convex mirror. So let's look at each one now. So I'm going to start on the left. So we're going to start with this one. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> start with this one. Okay. And here the image is smaller, but it's upright. Okay. It's upright, and you can kind of tell by the way the image is here um, that this one is going to be convex. Okay. Convex mirrors almost always make things smaller than they actually are. Okay, and these are the types of mirrors that you see on the corners of roadways so you can see around the corner. Okay. Now if we look at this one, we also get an upright image, but it's a lot bigger. Okay. So because this part is bigger here, and then also if we look in the background, everything else is flipped. Okay, so the candle is upright, but everything else is flipped. And because there are things in the mirror that are flipped, Okay, that helps us know that this is a concave mirror, okay, because only concave mirrors will flip things. Okay, and we can identify this other one the same way. This time everything is flipped, so this one must be concave. Okay, because even the candle here is flipped, we know that this one 
must be um, outside the focal point. And this one, the candle is upright when everything else is flipped. So then the candle is inside the focal point of the mirror. So another thing that we talk about is a magnification of the image. We just looked at those images and some of them were bigger or smaller. And so magnification is just the amount an image size is increased or decreased compared to the object. So we use the capital letter M, and we're going to find out more calculations about this later. But what you should know is that if M is less than 1, then the image is smaller. And if M is greater than 1, then the image is bigger than the object. And both of these are then the object. So the last thing we need to talk about now is parabolic mirrors, okay? And parabolic mirrors are mirrors whose reflective surface is shaped like a parabola. So you might remember from math, a parabola is anything that has the general form y equals x squared, right? And you kind of end up with a graph that looks like this of y equals x squared. And so instead of a spherical surface, we have a parabolic surface. And parabolic mirrors are unique because any light shined in parallel to the axis of the mirror will reflect through the focal point. Okay, so here's an example of that, right? We've got all of these lasers shining light in. No matter where they hit, they reflect and come through and they hit here at the focus or the focal point. So this is called a parabolic reflector. So parabolic mirrors are used in a lot of different applications. Okay, the most common ones are headlights on cars. Uh, and so you can see here they put the light at the focal point, and so then the light is traveling out and it will reflect, reflect off the surface. Okay, and here this is just showing that they'll use glass or something to aim it down at the road, but it will all go out parallel. And so that gives the headlight more uh, luminance to put onto the roadway. Satellite dishes also do the same thing, except now we're sending out other types of electromagnetic rays, like radio waves or other types of waves like that. And so then they have the waves coming from here. Okay, they hit the surface here, and you can imagine this is a parabola, and all the light, the rays get shot out like this in a nice straight line at wherever they want to aim them. And they also use them for telescopes. Okay, parabolic mirrors reflect light really clearly, so they are used in the telescopes that we use to see deep into the galaxy. So that brings us to the end of 11.3 section A. I will see you guys in class and let me know if you have any questions.